So revival is outpouring. How outpouring happens is the church coming back together again. Amen? It says in verse in verse number Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. It means there's unity. It means there was fellowship. It means, it means that there's something we agree on. His name is Jesus. So let's not let anything divide us. If we could agree on Christ, then how did something divide us? You know, what is greater than Christ? There is nothing greater than Christ. When we're not unified in the body of Christ, then we're saying that there's something greater than Christ. That's what we're saying. Amen? That's what we're saying. It says they were together, all together in one place. Verse number two, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. I'm telling you, I hear something. They heard something then. They, Elijah heard it. Ezekiel heard it. And they all heard, every one of them heard it. You've been hearing it. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. I'm telling you, in my spirit, I just hear something that God is stirring, something that God is bringing. I tell you, everybody's all worked up about Hurricane Sandy and all these. You know what? I just feel like God is saying this, you know. It says in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 15, that God will do it in the natural and then he'll do it in the spiritual. So there's a model that God gives us of how he does things. So you watch things that happen in the physical world, and it's a picture of things that are getting ready to come in the spiritual world. He said, I sent Adam. He was a man. It didn't work out. I knew it wasn't going to, but you had to see that so you could understand my son Christ, who is also a man but fully God. He is the way. You know what I'm saying? Adam couldn't do it, but Christ could. We saw it in the physical and the natural so that we could understand Christ in the spiritual. Without Adam, we wouldn't understand Christ. That's the way God works. He shows us things. That's why being observant to things going on around you is really important because God's speaking through everything. So you say, what's he talking about with Hurricane Sandy and Arctic Blast and Midwest? I'm saying God's getting, I say, I'm getting ready to converge, baby. I'm getting ready to bring it all together right over this area right here. I'm going to pour something out on this. I'm going to stir things up in this area. There's going to be an outpouring in this area. You say, ah, you know, that's crazy spiritual guru stuff. You call it what you want. But I spoke it, and when it happens, you'll know that God was in it. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, God's getting ready to do something big. He's getting ready, and it's all going to converge right here. I've been, look, ever since I've been here, I said, God, there's a northeast outpouring. If you send me here, then there's going to be a northeast outpouring. I don't care what anybody says. And I've said that ever since I've been here. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to converge. You know what I'm saying? It's usually, it's usually down in Texas and Oklahoma, isn't it, Jake? That's, where all the, that's how the tornadoes form. All these weather systems come in, the twisters. The, the, it doesn't happen up here. This, this kind of stuff just doesn't happen up here. You know what I'm saying? Hurricanes up here? Seriously? Tornadoes over in, over in Massachusetts? Really? I'm telling you, God's saying, I'm going to do something right here. And I'm going to show it to you through the natural elements before I do it in the spiritual realm. It's a spirit, look, it's a biblical principle. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to pour something out. He's converging. Do you hear him? I just, you see, you're so crazy. I, you, know, you can call me what you want. I don't know. I just feel like God's saying, I'm doing it. This is what I hear God saying. I'm converging right over this area. I'm bringing all these things together, and I'm going to mix things up. I'm going to pour something out. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be huge. It's going to be revival. You say, what's the result? The result is this. The church, the body of Christ is going to come together. And we're going to do something about building this kingdom instead of talking about it. Amen? I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. This is what God's telling me. Amen? I'm telling you, this is what God is saying. They were all together in one place. They begin to hear something. And all of a sudden, something begin to fall. And then you say, well, what was, what was the point? Okay, with, 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 with Ezekiel, there was life. With Elijah, there came rain, and there was provision, and the drought ended, and thus the famine ended. So what about this? What's the significance here? The significance is this, is that the church of Christ, the body of Christ, was birthed. It was finally formed. Peter stood out, and 3,000 people got saved that day. If you keep reading to the end of the book of Acts, they came together, and they had and they fellowship and the church was birthed and God added to their number daily I'm telling him it's kingdom that's being built it's kingdom work it's the blessing I'm, God's not just bringing things back to life he's not just providing for things that have been brought back to life but he's wanting to add to the body there's an outpouring that is coming revival what I hear God saying is I'm getting ready to pour something out and I'm really going to start building my church it's really going to begin to advance and souls are going to start coming in and and lives are going to begin to change. And I'm going to begin to build. And daily, I'm going to start adding. Keep reading. It says that they, they went from addition to multiplication. I'm telling you, God's going to start bringing them in. From the north, the south, and the east, and the west. As Donna spoke just a moment.
moment ago. God's going to do it. It's converging right here. There is an outpouring that's coming here. Amen? Amen? It's coming. It's coming. Go, go down to Long Island. Go down to New Jersey and tell somebody, say, Sandy's not coming here. It's not coming. You know, look, that stuff you see on the, I know, you go to the National Hurricane Center. I like to go to that website. It's not coming. What are you going to tell me? You're going to say, look, stupid, please get out of my way. It's coming. I'm telling you, the church needs to get that same mindset. We, it's coming. We need to be convinced about, what, what, what do you need? God to, you need God to create a website for you? It's lw-cog.com, right, Alicia? I mean, what do you want? What do you want God to do? Could he be any more clear? Yes, God to speak, give me signs. God do this, God do that. He's saying, I'm pulling my hair out of my head, man. I'm showing you everything you guys need to do. Start speaking life. Start praying for my provision and understand that I'm converging and wanting to pour something out on my church. Bring it back together again. It's called revival. What more do you want God to say? What more do you want him to do? My goodness, I don't even know if he's got here. But if he does, you know he's done pulled it out by now. Because we're crazy. God, do this. God, do that. God, speak. God, show me this. And he said, I've done it all. Wake up, man. An outpouring is coming. Amen? I know some of y'all look at me like, whoo. I cannot wait till they say amen. I am never coming back to this place again. Yeah, you are. Because it's going to pour out. And you're going to come in with like a wig on and a big jacket and act like you don't know anybody. Act like you're a visitor. You're going to come back because God's going to do it. God's going to bring his, look, I'm telling you, he's going to bring the church back together again. Amen? It's going to happen. It's happening. You can say what you want to say. It's happening. We've got other churches coming already. Already coming. Three churches that meet on Wednesday night right here. And guess what? None of those churches are here this morning because they're not supposed to be. Because they're supposed to take what God is doing on Wednesday night back to their church. So that's what God's doing. He's, it's everywhere. It's not here. It's everywhere. Amen? I'm telling you, I'm convinced that's what he's doing. It says right here, and I'll end with this, Psalm 133. I love this. I was going to get into 2 Chronicles 5. I was, Patricia, I was, but I, I, I time here. Read 2 Chronicles chapter 5. There's, the, there's another Old Testament principle of God pouring himself out, the ingredients. I'm telling you, it's all there. Think about 2 Chronicles 5, 11 through 14, if you want to read that later. It's a great passage. I mentioned it on Wednesday as well. But Psalm 133, I'll leave, it, I'll leave this with you. It says this. You know this, right? You could probably quote it with me. How good and pleasant it is. When brothers live together in unity. I know you say, well, brothers, all the females in the house are saying, well, what about me? Okay, let's rephrase it so we all can understand it. How good and pleasant it is when the body of Christ lives together in unity. When all the parts come together. What do you think Paul was thinking about when he wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 12? I mean, seriously. When all the parts, when the body of Christ, would, it says live now. It didn't say come together once a week in unity. It didn't say that. It, did, it didn't say occasionally. It didn't say with the things that you can't agree upon. It says when we live together in unity. That means when we're under the same roof together in unity. It means on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day we're in unity. It, it doesn't mean that we, that we agree with each other, but it, we, can, we can disagree that we, you know what I'm saying? We can agree that we disagree, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It, we're together. We're living this thing together. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. You know what I'm saying? He says you've got to live together. We've got to do this thing together in unity. In unity, it is like the precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. Verse number three, it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. He's saying, what does all that mean? It means it's awesome. It means something fabulous and incredible is taking place, and it starts at the head, and it covers the rest of the body. It's Christ doing something that begins to affect and just glue the whole body back together again. He says in the latter part of verse number 3, For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. It means the blessing that God is bringing is permanent. It means the blessing that God is bringing is is eternal and everlasting it means it means that what god is bringing this revival that i keep hearing that he's bringing this life this provision and this outpouring it's something that completes things it's something that perfects things it's something that brings the body back together again and we start moving and getting in motion and it, it, we don't get fragmented again you say well you, what was it like a last day church a remnant you know is this like the big the big revival thing right before Christ comes back for his church? I don't know. He didn't tell me that. But you can interpret it that way if you want to. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this, is that God 
desires to bring the church back together again. But that's what revival is. Revival is not a series of services. It's not, it's not us coming out on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night and having church and singing a few songs and somebody come from, I don't know, Zimbabwe and preach. You know what I'm saying? We don't need somebody from Zimbabwe to preach. We don't need an evangelist. You know what? You've got a great worship team. Uh, you got a great pastor. I'll listen to God. You know, we got everything that we need. This is an in-house job. We don't need all this stuff. You don't need all this thing, all what you thought revival was. What you need to do is step up, and I need to step up. And we just need to move with God and let him do his thing and let him call revival what he wants to call revival. We need to start speaking life. We need to start praying and praying and praying and praying and get determined about praying about God's provision and not man's and not anybody else's God's provision. God's provision, and then an outpouring will come. When things are set in place, there's going to be a converging and an outpouring. And God says, you watch. You watch what this storm does. You watch what it does. You see what it does in the physical. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for what I'm going to do in the spiritual. That's, that's what I hear God saying. Amen? Amen? I know, it's prophetic. It is. I'm, I'm pro- that was all prophecy. It was all prophetic. It really was.